Hello Farmdale family. In this video, we want to talk about family worship. But before we talk about family worship, we should ask what it is. So what is family worship? Family worship is a time where those in one household gather together for the worship of God. This practice is derived from scripture, specifically in passages like Deuteronomy chapter 6 and Proverbs 22, as well as Ephesians chapter 6. Not only is it prescribed in those passages, but there are also patterns of this where heads of households are leading their entire family in the worship of God. And so in this video, we want to talk about some principles and practices of family worship. And it is important, especially in this time, that we engage in this practice. Why? Well, right now, because of COVID-19, we are unable to gather together for the public worship of God. The public worship of God being a primary means of grace that God has given us to strengthen his people. So during this time, we realize that nothing can substitute for the public worship of God. But we do also understand that there are certain things that will help strengthen us and nourish us spiritually. So that when we do come back together for the public worship of God, worship of God we will be ready because we have been strengthening, strengthening ourselves in private worship. So, what are some principles and practices of family worship that we can adopt? First principle of family worship is that we ought to be convicted that this is a practice that we should be engaging in as a family. And while I don't have time to explain all the reasons why we ought to be convicted, I think what you ought to do is look at Deuteronomy chapter 6 and Ephesians chapter 6 and see the commands of heads of households, specifically fathers, to be leading their family in the worship of God. But this needs to be a conviction that you derive from Scripture. Once that's the case, you need to just do it. This is something that Scripture commands us to do. We are to diligently lead our families in the worship of God. And so we should start, and we should start immediately. We should obey the Word of God. It doesn't mean that this will always be easy. It doesn't mean it will be perfect. But we need to get the ball rolling. And the third principle is that we need to keep doing it. You will miss it. There will be times when you are unable to do it, or there will be times when you forget, or there will be times when the, the stress and busyness of life makes it more difficult than others. And so you may miss a day, two days, three days, even a week. Don't stop. Keep doing it. And so those are three basic principles. And what I want to do now is move to some practices for family worship by asking just a few simple questions. First, what should be included in family worship? Well, you should read the Word of God. Open up the Word of God, the living Word of God, and simply read it. It is powerful on its own. Second, explain the Word of God. Take some time saying, this is what the Word of the Lord says, and this is what it means. It does not have to be a full-on sermon. It can be a brief explanation of what the Word of God says and how your family should respond appropriately to what God has given us in His authoritative Word. Third, sing the Word. Grab a good hymnal, grab a good songbook, and sing the words that are derived from Scripture together. Engage in family singing. Fourth, pray the Word. Begin family worship with a time of prayer, asking the Lord to bless and cause us to believe through faith the truths that are contained in his word. Then close in prayer based upon what you have learned through the reading of God's word, the explaining of God's word, and the singing of God's word. So those are some of the elements that should be included in family worship. And another question is, who should do what when you gather for family worship. Let me say this clearly and emphatically. The emphasis throughout Scripture is that husbands and fathers lead their family in family worship. The very reason why the world is a mess, the very reason why we have the coronavirus right now is because sin has entered the world. And do you know when sin entered the world? Sin entered the world when the man that God appointed to be the husband of the first woman, when God gave Adam the instructions for his family that they should not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Yet, 
we see in Genesis chapter 3 that Adam is absolutely silent. We would have no idea that Adam was there in the text, except for the fact that the text says he was there. And Why don't we know that he's there? Well, we see Eve talking. We see Satan talking in the form of a serpent, but we do not see Adam speaking. Because Adam was silent and did not protect his family, specifically his bride with his words, the whole world fell into sin. And so because man didn't lead, man didn't take the initiative, and man didn't speak, the world was cursed because it fell into sin through the sin of Adam as he failed to protect his wife, Eve. This is not the only place we see this. Again, in Deuteronomy and Ephesians, we see that husbands are specifically to be leading their family in the instruction of the Lord. But even though it's given to the father to lead, the whole family can participate. For example, they can participate through singing together. They can participate through memorizing together, whether they're the a catechism, whether they're scripture references, whether they're songs, all the family can engage in memorization. They can also participate through reading. So, how can the husband lead while the whole family is participating? First, establish when and where family worship will happen in your home. Also, decide the content of family worship. Pick the songs that your family ought to learn and sing together. Pick what books of the Bible you will read together. Choose what catechism you will lead your family in. Not only can you establish when and where, decide the content, and you can also determine who will participate. Ask your wife, ask your children, if they're able, to read a verse or a passage of Scripture. Ask them questions. Also, allow them to ask you questions. And this can be intimidating. I have had my daughters ask me several difficult and challenging questions, especially coming from a seven, a five, and a two-year-old. Sometimes I don't always have the best answer. Sometimes I don't always have an answer at all. But I'm able to say, you know what? I don't know. Let me turn to the Word of God and take some time to see how I can figure out how to best answer your question. So if you're asked a question that you don't know, don't be afraid. Be courageous enough to admit, I don't have the answer right now. But also be courageous enough to say, I'm going to grab a book. I'm going to grab the Bible. I'm going to grab a commentary. Or I'm going to grab my pastors, my elders, and ask them this question so that I can lead my family rightly. Also, be the one to give the explanation and interpretation of what God's Word says. And finally, you can open and close your time of family worship in prayer. Another question we can ask is, when should we do family worship? That's a great question. There's one primary governing principle that should guide this, and that is make it a routine. When can you make it a routine for your family to worship? Choose a similar time. Choose a similar place. For example, for the Sparks family, it works out very well that we engage in family worship right towards the end of, end of dinner. I typically finish dinner first, and while my daughters and my wife are still finishing, I grab our materials, I grab our hymn book, our Bible, the resources that we use for catechism, and I begin leading our family worship right then and there. But the key thing is, find a good time and place that works well for your family. It may be early in the morning, it may be at breakfast, it may be at dinner, or it may be later in the evening, and you may have to adjust it during certain phases of life. So allow this principle to govern you. Make it a routine. When and where can you make it a routine? Once you discern that, just start practicing it. Another question we can ask is, how should we do it? Well, first, keep it simple. Keep it around 10 minutes, especially if you're beginning and especially if you have small children. Don't feel like, in fact, we are not encouraging you to try to replicate what takes place on Sunday morning. We're not encouraging husbands to preach long 45, 30-minute sermons. What we're doing is saying, establish a pattern of rhythm and worship in your family's life. You do not teach them everything that they need to know. But what you need to do is gather them together for the worship of God and allow God to work. And over weeks, months, years, 
God will begin to teach your family and instruct your family through the leadership of you as husbands and fathers in your home. With saying that, a note that I want to uh, take a I want to take a minute to address something. The guide that we're putting out, the one that Will is putting together, is more designed for our Sunday time of consecration during the quarantine. We're not suggesting that you have something that long for every time you gather together for family worship. In fact, what we hope that this will do is recognize that there is help you recognize that there are times when you need to consecrate that you need to consecrate to the Lord on the Lord's day. And there are also times that you need to have for family worship throughout. And we want these to be mutually reinforcing. We want you to be able to lead your family through the worship guide and allow that to make it easier for you to lead during family worship throughout the week. We also want the times of family worship that you engage in throughout the week to help you as you come back together on the Lord's Day for that more extended time of consecration to the Lord on His day. And when we're able, by the grace of God, to gather back together those times of family worship will reinforce what the church is doing in public worship, and the times of public worship will help reinforce what you're doing in family worship throughout the week. You also want to do family worship systematically. Read through books of the Bible. Don't be picky choosy. This verse one day, this verse the next day, one book one day, another book of the Bible the next day. Grab a book of the Bible and start working through it. Work through it at a speed that's comfortable for your family. Maybe that's short passages and paragraphs. Maybe that's chapters. Figure out what works well for you. You can also do it systematically, not by simply reading through books of the Bible, but by also working through catechisms. Work through a catechism that will help you walk through key doctrines of the faith and grab a catechism that has the scripture verses that go with it so you can read those verses that go with that catechism. But the key point is to do it systematically, whether it's through reading through books of the Bible or using a catechism through times of family worship. You also want to memorize. Allow times of family worship to be a time of memory. Memorize songs. Maybe you sing the same exact song for one to two weeks so that it gets stuck into your head and etched into your soul. Memorize scripture. Our family reads a verse of scripture, sometimes the same verses of scripture, over and over and over again. Like Genesis 1-1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. We want our family to make sure we have that verse memorized so we will read that verse over and over and over again and then move on to another verse. Maybe it's good for this time for your family to memorize the 23rd Psalm. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. What a great truth to hold to and memorize and share, especially during this time when many are walking through the valley of the shadow of death in complete fear. You can also memorize catechisms. Say them over and over again so that we memorize key truths that will guide and orient our lives through difficult and trying times. Another question we may have is, what should we use during this time of family worship? Well, you want to be able to use a Bible. You want to be able to have the Word of God there, present, ready, and open, because family worship centers upon the Word of God. So make sure you all have your Bibles with you, at least those who can read. Also, use a hymnal. Go ahead and buy a hymnal for your family. Use a Bible commentary. You may not be able to bring that into family worship because you don't want it to become a time of lecturing. The focus is on the worship of God. But the Bible commentary, either one commentary for the whole Bible or different commentaries for different books of the Bible, will help you understand what key passages say that your family may be studying during family worship. You also want to be able to use a confession of faith or a catechism that will help you through this time. Another question you may ask is, well, what if my spouse isn't saved? This is a great question for a wife who maybe has a husband who's not a believer, a husband who's not able to lead their family in family worship. Well, in this instance, you become the spiritual leader in your family while quietly and submissively following the words of 1 Peter chapter 3, trying to win your husband over with your character 
in your conduct. But during that time, it doesn't mean you live in complete and utter silence. No, it's good for you to lead your family in worship because you do not have someone who can function as a spiritual head of your family. As for husbands, well, what if there's not a time when your wife is willing to join you or because she's not a believer? Well, you can encourage her to sit with you. You can also encourage her to participate as much as she's willing to as the Word of God is read and Scripture verses are memorized and the words of God are sung through song. If she's not able or willing to participate in that, it's still something that you want to be able to do on your own, praying and trusting that God will use this time to bring your spouse to salvation. Another question you may have is, well, what if I'm single? What if I don't have a family that I can lead in worship because I'm either widowed or I've never been married? Well, you still want to engage in these activities. Make sure you're spending time in private worship. Make sure you're singing. Make sure you're memorizing God's word. Work through a catechism. You still want to be able to engage in all these responsibilities that God has called us to in his word. Well, as we come to a close, there's another question that we need to ask. What's next? Well, the first step is to develop a plan and start. Begin. Grab some key resources that will help you do this. Uh, in this, After we post this video, we're going to post links that will say, hey, why should you do family worship? Well, if you want to know why, read these books or read these articles. If you have questions on how do I lead family worship, we're also going to post more books and articles that will assist you in the basic how-tos of family worship. Well, you may have another question. What do, what do I use in family worship? We're going to give you some resources that will be in the form of catechisms, that will be in the form of Bible studies, that will help you lead. We're also going to recommend hymnals that your family may want to buy and purchase during this time. So we're going to try to equip you with the sources that you need to lead in family worship. Well, if you're a husband and you're sitting there and saying, I've, I've tried this before and it hasn't worked, or I've never tried this before and I don't know how to do this, or I've been trying this and our family's struggling, here's what you need to do. Find a man that can help you. Contact your elders. Find a man of God who has been leading his family in worship and say, what have you done that's been helpful? What have you done that's been harmful? Believe me, there's been times in our life when I've been inconsistent and I've had to repent and confess my sin to the Lord for not leading my family in worship. I've made a lot of mistakes in trying to lead my family in worship. I would love nothing more than for you to reach out to me and say, Hey, <laughs> Drew, where have you failed so that as I start this, I can try to get my family on the right track? Or what principles and practices have you found helpful? I would love nothing more, and I know our other elders would love nothing more than to share with you how you can lead your family in family worship. As a husband, you may be getting to the end of this and saying, what if I failed? You know what? I'm realizing in this time that my family needs greater spiritual leadership than I've been able to offer them. If you're asking that question at the end of this video, I just want to say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord that God is convicting you to do what God has called you to do in his word. And let me encourage you to say that the fact that you feel like you have sinned against God and family is a good thing. I would encourage you then to confess your sin to God. I would also encourage you to confess your sin to your wife and children. Model to them how to confess sin and seek forgiveness. And then repent of your sin and obey what the word of God says and say, you know what? As your father, as your husband, I'm going to do my best to lead this well. And I'm going to fail, and I'm just going to ask that you endure this with me. Your family needs nothing more than to see you model the Christian life of faith, repentance, confession, and obedience. What a great time to start than right now where we realize we need to be leading our family spiritually, especially during these difficult times. And then I want to encourage you to obey the word of the Lord, trusting that he will give you the necessary grace and nourishment that you need to obey what he has called us to do in his word. May the Lord bless your family worship as you continue to practice it and start to practice it.